Hi, I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101, and I've done videos on this before, but I am going to do a new one. I'm not going to reiterate what I said completely before, but I want to do it in a different way now. I want to talk about how important it is to view non-judgment of someone who's sexually, sexually built differently or thinks differently or fashioned into a different type of a way of being by society or fashions themselves in a different type of way of being in, tr in order to try to emulate what they see in society or what they emulate what they think their feelings are. And I want to talk about the idea that you would go about having a relationship with a sex person that your sex. I don't want to get into all the ins and outs and what have you, but I want to say that there's a lot of judgment in this world. And so a lot of times that can fuel somebody because they say, look at these judgmental people. I don't want to be like them. I want to look for happiness and search my own soul for what I want. And so that can actually fuel them in a, in a roundabout way. But I'd like to say that I've been uh, looking at the verses uh, a little bit lately that might have inspired some of these things. And one of them was uh, basically the same. But if you look at the different Gospels, they're, they're said differently. I think it's because it's a living word and it's from different people's points of view that were there with Jesus. So if you look into some of the verses, they'll say, uh, same one, I'll use the same one. It's nothing that goes into the man that makes him unclean. It is what comes out of the man that makes him unclean. Thoughts of sexual immorality and such, okay? And we have to remember that at that time, he was talking to the Jews. The Jews were under the covenant, the Old, the old uh, Testament uh, covenant with Abraham, that their descendants were going to be like the stars in the heavens, the sand on the seashores. If you uh, want to make sure that promise comes true, your spiritual leaders that tell you what God has planned for you are going to say, hey, you can't be having sexual immorality. You can't be doing things in a, in a deviant way, casting your seat on the ground, having relations with other people that are same sex, uh, not having the desire to have faith in God and have children and continue to have this covenant develop as God, as he says he would, would bless you. Instead, you'll be cursed. So this is wrong to do this. This is what makes it a sin. It's wrong to do this. But if you look at, like, say, Mark, I believe it's 720. Um, I was reading the other day. You can count the exact same verse. It's not what goes into the man because that will just go out into the drought and go be washed away with meat. And then he says, but it's what, it's not what comes into the man, but what goes out of the man that causes the man to be defiled, to be unclean. And then he named 13 things. <laughs> he had adultery and fornication there at the top. You know, talking about, you know, how that won't work because that won't work towards um, what Abraham and God had made a covenant about. But then you've got all these other things that are also wrong. And when you talk about people that are different and sexuality thing and you try to be judgmental, you tend to go towards the one that just lists the first way it was written so you don't have to look at yourself. But if you look at all the other verses, you know that you're supposed to take the beam out of your own eye before you take the splinter out of the brother's eye. But what happens is they use whatever Jesus words they need to to come up with rationalizations for what they think and feel that they're not quite sure of. And then they apply judgment, which is one of the biggest warnings Jesus says not to do, is applies judgment, okay? So when my children talk to me, because my daughter is in theater, and I was in, I was not in theater, but I was in um, art, and then I went right from art into the movie industry. And so I was surrounded, just like her now, by gays all the days of my life. I was also shy and quiet as an artist, and I was surrounded by gays that were shy and quiet to get to know one another before they even knew what gay was, or even I knew what gay was. So how, I want to be non-judgmental when I give my children advice on how you should be sexually, how you should view others sexually, how others that view things differently should be seen, how they should come into your life and be respected and cared for and not judged. And the way that I put it was this. I said, your creator, even though we're all created, well, we're supposed to be created equally, <laughs> 
but we're actually created differently. There are both sexes, but then there's people right from birth that are both sexes. And so they didn't choose that. And if you look in the um, Old Testament, there was things that could be done for people that had abnormalities. They weren't less as far as God's love for them, but they were less as far as their place in society. But let's not go there and figure out how we're gonna make people that we wanna judge less in society now. Let's just say that God knew all the time that there were gonna be things. Like for instance, when you give a sacrifice, you're supposed to give a non-blemished one. You know, God gave blemish into the world. There's reason for blemish. Again, like I was talking before, you know, if, if you hit yourself on the hand with a hammer and you stop, it feels good. I think that was the video before this. If you have blemish, you realize what perfection is. Where you get closer to perfection, you realize what beauty is. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, though. The blemish is in the eye of the beholder. So I say to my kids, I say, okay, look, this is all I can say. The creator, no matter how he created them, no matter how diverse, he wants the greatest that can be for each of his creations. He doesn't want to hold back his love and the greatest way of life they can have. I just want to hold that back. But if you choose voluntarily to take a lesser choice than you could choose, he wouldn't allow for it, the sacrifices. You couldn't have a blemished animal. But if you choose in this life now to take a lesser choice, here's what I compare it with. It's not that you're going to be brought down to the depths. I don't even want to call lesser choice people, but some of the people have been shown from the beginning to be different. They have abnormalities, whether in birthed by it, believe that they're birthed by it, actual physicality birthed by it, change over to it because of uh, the ways of this world and their confusion or their lack of good upbringing, or choose over to it because they want to, because they find a stronger connection there, they have physicality ties to it, or uh, they want to rebel against society, kind of like a lot of atheists are fueled by what they see in the negatives of what Christianity is supposed to be that's been presented incorrectly, and they become even stronger against what they are, um, were once because they love rebelling. There's a lot of reasons for someone being not of the standard norm, and I don't think they're all necessarily bad because we're not trying to fill this planet with descendants as promised by Abraham any longer. That Old Testament was abolished when the temple curtain was torn in two and Jesus died on the cross. It's over. We're in the New Testament now. Jesus laid out what that New Testament, all the terms of it is. So what do I say to my children? They need me to tell them what the Creator might be viewing it as in conscious counseling, perspective counseling with my children. And I say this, okay, I'll give you about an eight minute thing, just so you can understand. Because I don't like to give things that I don't give a lot of time for people to understand. I say it's like this. You're given a box of a puzzle with your spouse or your chosen other, or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or you live in whatever and you're going to create wonder with that puzzle in front of God in front of your created spouse or significant other and you're going to enjoy putting those puzzle pieces together you have a good time you're going to like seeing that picture develop you're going to learn things about each other and if you're a man and woman and if you're dedicated to one another truly married and truly work together and truly have God-centered relationship You'll assemble that entire puzzle if you're given long enough. But at least your intent will be to assemble the entire puzzle. And everything will be there and its splendor and glory will show forth and a cornucopia of blessings will pour forth from it. And the picture will be revealed to you of your life purpose, God's purpose for you, and your life purpose with one another. And your fullness as an individual. Everything is as it can best be. Notice I didn't say should be. Because if you're doing anything any less but still have good intent and you work that puzzle, the box that you were given, you'll still have all those same qualities. You'll still be able to gain blessedness and the things that the Creator wants for you. And you'll be able to learn about the world and its purpose and what your purpose is for Him as a servant, minister. You will be able to develop greatly with that other person and do great things in the world and not be abomination because you're not trying to create those children for Abraham anymore. What you'll be though is a number of pieces short of the full picture that you would have had. That's not a horrid thing. But 
let's not say it's not the way it is. You'll be a couple of pieces short. You'll go down a different road. Perhaps your picture on your puzzle will be incredibly different and it'll give you something that no one else had that's a wonder to share with the world. Fine. Perhaps you'll be given a box that really short changed you. Your head was not in the right place and you really can't make anything out of it and it was a disaster. But what I'm saying to you is simply this. Your puzzle won't have the full measure of pieces that you would have had for the original intent for the larger commonality of man and woman's purpose together. That doesn't make you less. It doesn't make you blemished. It just is a true statement. You will have great love of God in your life. You will do great things with and for God in your life. You will do great things for one another and your great things will be as great in their own way as what those that had that regular standardized more probability type picture. There's nothing wrong with you being unique. There's nothing wrong if you put your life and faith in God's service and trust Him. You'll be given a wonderful, splendorous job to do. It'll just be unusually different than the standard core. But don't feel judged unless. Just realize you will not be able to partake in all the things that could have been there if you had chosen differently or even been born in a slightly different way. But that's not necessarily a negative. Because as I said before, God created some that were biologically different from birth. How are they supposed to decide? The question here is intent. Did you want to run from God? Did you want to be of the things of man? Did you want to do whatever you wanted and not care about the authority over you from he who created you? If that's the case, you're missing puzzle pieces or your different picture on that puzzle is gonna cause an abhorrent negative force in your life. And it may one day bring you to realizing through that negative force that you have made errors and you can redeem yourself. But just because you go down that road and you don't know another one and you're not comfortable enough with it to be mainstream, don't feel badly. But I'm gonna sit here and be, please don't get angry at me. I'm gonna sit here and be saying to you, Okay, but you realize you are not living the standardized way. That doesn't make you not blessed. That's very important to realize. But just accept, just accept to be comfortable with it that you're not living the standardized way. And don't let those who are living the standardized, more common way tell you that their way's better. That's like saying it's better to be a guy than a girl. <laughs> it's not, it's just different. So don't let that be something that irks you, makes you thrust your hand at the Creator and curse Him, or curse yourself, or those amongst you that don't have the conscious understanding to see love when they see you, and see potential and goodness too in the creation. Don't thrust your hand at them. This is how I explain it to my children. Your puzzle's gonna be different, and some will be missing some maybe some pieces, or maybe we don't use the missing pieces analogy. Maybe we should use the picture on the puzzle is going to be different. Okay? Maybe it won't be the same fullness that it would be, but it'd be a different type of fullness. I believe God can use all people and the fullness of their picture for the betterment of reality for all. And that's a blessed God thing. And that's how you should feel about sexuality. That's the way I put it to my children anyway. I'm Paul Roberts, and this is Conscious Counseling 101.